Bruce here with GLB Productions. Thanks for joining us for this video. Today we're going to compare two of the world's most popular microphones. We have the Shure SM57 and the Shure SM58. I'm going to show you what are some of the similarities and some of the differences and we're also going to look at what are the potential applications for these two microphones. Let's begin. Here we have the two microphones next to each other. I hope you like the blue. This little pad is just to prevent them from rolling around while we're doing the review. As you know, both of these microphones are cylindrical in construction, so if you put them on a flat surface, they will have a tendency to roll away, followed shortly thereafter by them hitting the floor, followed thereafter by cursing from the sound engineer. Having said that, you'll notice that they look extremely similar. They are about the same length and they both use the same body piece here. Uh, this metal piece here is a little bit longer on the 57 and the grill obviously on the 58 is much larger. In terms of weight, the 57 is 284 grams and the 58 is 298 grams, mainly because the 58 uses an all steel windscreen and the 57 uses a plastic windscreen with a stainless steel uh, wire mesh at the top, as you can see there. Both of these microphones are extremely well known. The 58, of course, known as a vocal microphone, which is almost impossible to destroy and which sounds good in almost any situation and the 58 known as a versatile instrument microphone. In terms of frequency response, the 58 goes from 50 to 15,000 Hertz or 15 kilohertz and the 57 goes from 40 to 15,000 Hertz, so a little bit lower in the 57. Output impedance is identical at 310 ohms for both of them. They're both low impedance microphones. And sensitivity is identical at minus 54.5 dBV per Pascal. You'll also note that neither of them have switches, which is a good thing. Control of the microphone does belong in the hands of the sound engineer and not the artist who already has enough to think about. So those are the similarities between the microphones. The other thing that you can't see, which is very important to take note of, is that both of these microphones use the same cartridge, meaning the actual transducer element inside the head of the microphone, which converts the sound pressure into electrical signals, is the same. And because of this, you'll notice that the mics do sound similar. The differences in the sound come from the design of the windscreen and we'll see this next when we get to the sound test. Time to see how these microphones sound, this being the SM58. Now before we proceed further I'll just tell you what the signal chain is. The microphones are being plugged directly into my Mackie 1202 VLZ Pro that you can see over here. The high pass filter is off the gain is set at 2 o'clock for both of the microphones, the EQ is flat, and the channel and master volumes are both set at unity gain. And you're listening to the output of the mixer. Obviously, I'm wearing headphones. These are my 770s, which I reviewed recently so that I can hear what you're hearing. So let's begin with the SM58. Now, as you can see, anytime you purchase a microphone, one of the important things is to look at the frequency response diagram because just knowing that the microphone goes from 50 hertz to 15 kilohertz won't really help you if you don't know what the shape of the curve is in between those two points. So as you can see, the microphone begins to roll off from around... 200 hertz. What the frequency response chart does not show you, which is very important with the SM58, is something called proximity effect. The closer the microphone is to your mouth, 
the more bass you have. So right now the mic's about an inch from my mouth. If I put my lips right on the grill of the microphone, you can hear there's an increase in the bass response. This is your late night radio voice, DJ love type of thing, okay? And a lot of singers like this. Unfortunately, it can be a problem with live sound because mics tend to start feeding back at that frequency. So in between that, you can see that the frequency response indicates a dip in what we call the low mid-range, in this case somewhere around 400 hertz. This helps to keep the muddiness out of the voice and uh, is one of the reasons why the 58 tends to sound good uh, in all kinds of different situations. You then have towards the right side, you have a rising presence peak in the high mid-range. In particular, you can see around 2 to 4 kilohertz. There is this presence peak. Now, this is what helps the voice to cut through in a loud uh, rock and roll band situation. You then have a quite a sharp drop-off and the mark, uh, the mic rolls off naturally uh, above about 10 kilohertz. So this is the sound of the SM58, uh, complete and without equalization. Now let's move to the SM57. Okay, this is the SM57. Now you can immediately hear that there's a difference in the high mid-range of the microphone. And I'll explain this as we go through the curve. Uh, looking at the curve, you can see once again that the low frequency response is quite similar to the 58. The cartridge is located closer to the front of the microphone, obviously because the 57 has a much smaller head than the 58. And as a result, if you use it as a vocal microphone without the windscreen, you will have more proximity effect. Sure discusses this on their website. This is the frequency response when I'm touching my lips to the grill of the 57. And you can hear that there's quite a lot of it there. Moving on, you can see that the 57 does not have as much of a low mid-range scoop. It's quite flat through the low mid-range. And then the presence peak on the 57 is quite a bit higher than on the 58. We saw on the 58 that it was between 2 and 4 kilohertz. With the 57, you have a presence peak which is closer to actually 5 kilohertz. 5, probably 6 kilohertz. And this is the reason why the top end response sounds a little bit different. So the 57 has a flatter mid-range response, which is one of the reasons why Sure sell it as an instrument microphone. Of course, the cartridge is the same. So the difference is more in terms of the details than in the actual design of the cartridge itself. And after that, you can see that the top end the 58 rolls off from around 10K. The 57 has a slightly uh, wider high frequency response and it only begins to really roll off uh, around 15 or probably 13, 14 kilohertz. So you'll get a sweeter and probably area top end uh, with the 57. Just do a quick comparison between the two microphones, the 58, you can hear the mid-range cut as well as the high mid-range presence boost. The SM57, you can hear the more present mid-range as well as the sweeter top end and the extended high frequency response of the SM57. Do a proximity effect comparison. This is with my lips on the grill of the SM58. And this is with my lips on the grill of the SM57. You can hear that the proximity effect is quite similar. Of course, we need to compare them in the instrument application as well. So I have a guitar here. This is a Takamine TSF48C. It's a a medium sized body, spruce top, rosewood back and sides acoustic guitar. And I've got the 58 set up first, uh, pointing at the 12th fret. Once again, same settings as before, no EQ, no high pass filter. Let's see how it sounds.
So there's the difference between the 58 and 57 on a guitar. In my opinion, I think the 57 definitely sounds better as an instrument microphone, simply because that's what it was designed for. It has that flat mid-range and sweet top end that we talked about. The 58, on the other hand, has the scooped mid-range and the presence boost in the high mid-range, so sounds better as a vocal mic. On that particular guitar, I think the 58 sounds a little bit cloudy, uh, maybe a little bit muddy, uh, depending on how you would use those terms. But the point I'd like to make is, is that the two mics are very similar in their way they sound. You can use the 58 as an instrument mic, you can also use the 57 as a vocal mic. So don't think that just because Sure sells one as a vocal mic and the other as an instrument mic that you have to use them like that. You know the old, the old rule in sound, if it sounds good, it's correct. The audience doesn't know what mic you're using and chances are they don't care if it sounds good. One of the things that you need to be aware of when you use the SM57 as a vocal mic is the fact that it does not have a very effective blast windscreen. So the 58 has that big ball with foam inside. The SM57 does not actually have any foam in here, so it's very vulnerable to what we call plosives. Those are P or B sounds which send blasts of air into the diaphragm. So if your speaker says something like the Pink Panther played a perfect game of ping pong, you can hear those P and B sounds really affect the performance of the microphone. However, Sure do sell a very useful accessory which I'll show you now. Now, if you're going to use the SM57 as a vocal microphone, by the way, I'm currently talking to you through the 58, I highly recommend that you use this accessory. Now, this is the A2WS windscreen. And this is an accessory that basically allows the 57 to function as an extremely efficient vocal microphone. Now, this on the 57 is regularly seen on the podium of the President of the United States of America. And when I fit this, you'll see how it looks. So I'm going to put the 58 down and we'll assemble the 57 and its windscreen. Okay, you'll still be able to hear me through the 58. Not very well, though. That's okay. So you take the 57 and... You can see that there's a little set screw there and you slip the, the windscreen over the top of the 57. And what's really important is that you need to leave some space between the top of the foam and the grill of the mic which is inside. So what I usually do is I push it all the way down and then I pull it back until you can see that line on the body. Then you simply tighten this, uh, this set screw here with a small screwdriver. Let's do that. Okay, you don't have to be all Conan the Barbarian on this. Just tighten it until the screen won't come off. There's what the two of them look like. Gives the uh, 57 a bit more cajones, I think. <laughs> okay, now this is the sound of the SM57 with the A2WS windscreen. And you can hear that although you lose a little bit of the top end, it is now much more resistant to plosives. The Pink Panther played a perfect game of ping pong. Much better. P and B sounds are much less able to get through this foam. Uh, just for interest, let's compare the windscreened 57 to the 58 with its stock windscreen. 57 and the SM58. You can hear that they still don't sound the same, which is a good thing, but it gives you a range of options and uh, the tonal palette which you can achieve with these various mics is very broad, which is why they've become industry standards for so long. 
All right, everyone, that's our comparison of the SM57 and SM58 microphones from Shure. Both of them great microphones, both of them industry standards with a very, very wide variety of uses. Just to summarize, the main takeaway that I'd like you to have from this video is that both of them can be vocal microphones and both of them work fine as instrument microphones. The 58 works better as a vocal microphone mainly because of the fact that it has a screen and the 57 works better as an instrument microphone because of its sweet top end and flat mid-range. But again, if it sounds good, by all means use it. Thanks for watching. This is Bruno Luce for GLB Productions saying have a nice day. Do please subscribe if you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to get back to you. Thanks a lot. See you again.